I'm David Breslow, the founder of the Personal Best Academy and the author of Wired to Win and The Seven Laws of Human Potential, 21 Days to Change the Way You Live, Work, or Play. And I'm here today because I want to do another training video. And to tell you the truth, I, I'm on the internet quite a lot, like a lot of you are, and I scour a lot of the social sites and also YouTube and other things to get information. And one of the things I notice quite a lot is that there are a lot of people talking about change and they're asking this question why is there so much resistance to change and also why is it so hard for people to change I'm in the change business everything I do is about human beings doing something different than they used to that's why I get called nobody calls me because they want things to stay the same as they were yesterday or last week or last year and if you're wondering why I'm holding these little two tennis balls I'll get to that in a minute but I really want to address this notion of change because a lot of companies spend a lot of money and a lot of time putting together these change initiatives to try to help their employees be different. They want them to change maybe their leadership skills or they want them to change who they are on the job or to help improve the way they do their work. But no matter what they want, individuals are spending a lot of time and money, organizations are spending a lot of time and money. So today, I want to do a little bit of a training video on change. And I want to answer that question for you. I want to answer the question that is, why is it so hard for people to change? And I want to hopefully help you stop spending a lot of money and a lot of time trying to have people change or trying to get yourself to change and do things better. And when I'm finished with this little exercise I'm about to show you, I think it'll be really clear and hopefully a little light will go on inside your head and you'll go, oh, that's why it's so difficult. So these little two tennis balls that I have here, I'm going to use for a reason. And here it is. This is a proprietary exercise that I do in all the presentations that I give. Because in addition to being a peak performance coach, I'm also a trainer and do a lot of presentations and a lot of speeches. Whether they're keynotes or breakouts or workshop type scenarios. And one of the workshops and speeches that I offer is called the, uh, the Extra Mile has very little traffic on it. Traffic is flowing on the Extra Mile. And when you really understand how to be on the Extra Mile, everything you do begins to soar. And the Extra Mile requires change. That's what people are really looking for. So that extra mile is really important for an organization to start traveling on and for an individual to start traveling on. So here we go. Here's why I'm holding these two tennis balls. And this is going to be a very low-tech presentation. I'm not using slides. I'm not using bells and whistles. I've got two old tennis balls in my hand. These are tennis balls I actually used to use and play with. And it's been years since I've been on the tennis court. So this is very low-tech. But here's the deal. Here's what I'd like you to know. This is the reason people don't change. So here's the exercise. Ball number one in this hand. Let's call this circle number one. And if you want to get out a piece of paper, you can follow along and draw this. Because when I'm doing a presentation, I actually have people uh, interactively involved in this. So if you want to get a piece of paper, draw on your paper one circle that fills up half the page. So this ball is representing circle number one. And circle number one represents your current conditions. So if you're an organization, your current conditions may be that people are underperforming, people are calling in uh, too many sick days, that there's poor communication going on, that people are resisting change initiatives when you send them through the system. Or if you're an individual, they could be things like, uh, gee, I procrastinate, or I lose confidence, and I don't follow through on things things like that. Your current conditions. These are the things that are holding you back. These are the negative things, the obstacles that are holding you back. So if you can, I'd like you to list three things or think about three things, honestly, that are holding you back from getting what you want. Because that's really what change is all about, right? So that's circle one. Now on your page, or this ball, is going to represent circle number two. Now, circle number two represents what you want. So in circle number two, you're going to list three things that you want. And if you're an individual, it could be, I want better relationships, I'd like to have more money, uh, I'd like to be more confident, I'd like to follow through on things. If you're an organization, it could be very similar things as that. Or it could be other things. It really doesn't matter what it is. 
But whatever it is, it belongs in circle two, because that's where you're headed. That's what you really want. But here's what I want you to see. Now I'm going to put both of these uh, tennis balls right next to each other. If this was a sheet of paper, you would see the very same thing you're looking at right now. And right now what you see is two circles that do not touch each other. Do you notice that? They do not touch each other. And there's a reason for that. Here's the problem now. I'm going to get to the solution of why people don't get what they want. The problem is that we spend so much time hanging out in circle one that we think that we're actually getting into circle two, which is where we want to be, but we're not. So what we do is we fool ourselves by improving the things in circle one. And it makes sense to do that, doesn't it? So please follow along with me here. This is really important. This is what I call a logical error. It's a logical error. And what happens is we're thinking that, geez, there's something in circle one that's not working for me. So logically, I should probably go try to improve that. Well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? But it doesn't work. And you have your own experience to prove that it doesn't really work. Because think about it. If you're hanging out in circle one and there's something in here that is holding you back and you decide to read more about it or go to workshops or do exercises or get strategies and get tips, whatever it is you decide to do, all you're really doing is improving the junk, I call it the junk, in circle number one. So maybe you're actually getting a little bit closer to the edge, getting better at some of those things. I'm not saying it's a complete waste of time. You are improving some of these things in circle one. But I want you to notice that circle two is still sitting over here. And you're not in it. You're still hanging out in circle number one. And maybe you've improved some of the elements, some of the junk in circle number one. But you're still not over here in circle two. I really want you to, to consider what I'm saying here. It's hugely important. Circle one and circle two do not meet. One does not lead you to the other. They're two completely separate entities. Now maybe you, you've heard of this guy called Einstein. Maybe you have, Albert Einstein. He had a quote that I think addresses this perfectly. And his quote was, you cannot solve a problem using the same mind that caused the problem in the first place. Guess what? Old mind, new mind. And what we do is we try to use our old mind to try to get us into this new mind place. Or, in my terms, circle number one, old mind. Circle number two, new mind. They're two different entities. You can't use the elements in this circle to get into this one. So I hope that is a, a kind of a low-tech graphic way to explain. This is the exact reason why we don't get what we want. Okay? Now there's a lot of scientific research out there. There's a lot of psychology. And you'll get a lot of answers about fear and procrastination and resistance and the what's in it for me. Which, they're all true. But I like to take things to their root cause. In the essence, you can strengthen yourself in these areas all you want. But all you've become is a little stronger in these areas. But you still haven't come into circle two, which is what you say you want. And it really is what you want. So this stuff will never get you into this stuff. And that's the point I'm trying to make here today. So what happens is the, the training that I talk about and the approach that I talk about and the book that I mentioned before, The Seven Laws of Human Performance, guess what? Those are specifically designed to put you smack dab in the middle of circle two, because that's where you want to live. Leave circle one alone, because it's not going to get you into circle two. You can see that. Hopefully you can see that graphically now. And hopefully this little training video makes a lot of sense to you. Because every time I've done this in a seminar or some other place in a free teleseminar, the one thing people remember most is this circle exercise. In fact, I often get emails in the subject line, somebody will write, help! I'm stuck in circle one, get me out. And that's exactly true. You know, they're, they're somewhat being tongue in cheek, but that's exactly what happens to all of us. I've been in circle one too. I still step into circle one, but I know now 
how to get into Circle 2 and do it more easily and do it more regularly. And so can you if you're an individual, and so can you if you're an organization. So, you're welcome to contact me if you like. You can reach me on an email at dave at davebreslow.com, B-R-E-S-L-O-W.com. Or you're welcome to visit the website. The link will be below this video.